hi all welcome to anjan jcp data engineering so in this video we are going to learn all this okay so how to process nested avro files using apache beam pipeline okay and uh, we are going to see how to test this pipeline using dataflow workbench this is an integrated environment already available within the dataflow google cloud console page okay you can create one environment and you can use this to iteratively develop your apache beam pipelines and also you can unit test those pipeline and you can also launch those pipeline into dataflow environment okay few viewers and our subscribers they are keep on asking to upload a video on how to process nested avro files and uh, using data flow pipelines okay so hence uh, i am doing this video okay and then we'll see launching this pipeline onto data flow runner from this notebook okay and also we are going to see how to install external python dependencies onto data flow workers through set of files because we are using a uh, few external python client libraries as part of our apache beam pipelines and we are going to see how to install them onto data flow workers okay and also we'll see some common issues you may encounter when you unit testing this pipeline and also when you launch this pipeline onto data flow environment okay so now uh, we will move to the architecture okay so in the first step i've already placed few avro files onto google cloud storage bucket okay onto specific folder okay we are going to read those files into our apache beam pipeline okay so this pipeline has two parallel branches i am going to discuss that in detail while i explain the code okay first we will unit test this pipeline in our notebook environment okay and then we will launch this pipeline into google cloud data flow environment okay so this will process the data and parallel it will write data into two different things okay the first one is google cloud storage bucket our pipeline will convert our output data into avro format again and it will write the data into google cloud storage bucket into a specific output folder okay and also it will write the data into cloud sql table see design and flow of our apache beam pipeline this would help you to understand this pipeline right in a better way okay so in the first step we are going to read nested avro data into a p collection so this is going to be our raw p collection we are going to have raw data so we don't have any transformation applied on top of this data right and this pipeline would have two branches which would be executed in parallel in the first branch we are going to apply a filter criteria okay on top of our raw data and then we are going to apply some kind of aggregation okay and then we are going to write the data into a resultant p collection okay so once we have the resultant data using our beam io avro connectors beam io is supporting different connectors to read data from different sources and to write data to different things right and we do have a avro connector which would help us to write data in avro format to a specified sync in our case we are writing data into our gcs file okay this is one branch okay in the second branch a similar kind of approach where we are again filtering the data in a different scenario for different criteria now we will aggregate the data once you have the aggregated data using our perdo functionality right perdo will be used to define uh, user defined logic and uh, which can be executed on a parallel distributed environment like data flow okay so within that part we have defined the database connection and uh, we have prepared some insert statements and we have uh, formatted data such a way that it can be inserted into a cloud sql table once it is ready within the within this part itself we are inserting the data into cloud sql table okay so these two branches will be executed in parallel you are going to see this when you execute this apache beam pipeline and data flow environment so i hope this will definitely help you okay so before i explain this apache beam code let us examine our input data okay so this is our google cloud storage bucket 
okay and here we have different folders for different purposes so we have our input data over here and when we write our output data through our apache beam pipeline so that pipeline will write data into this folder okay we do have a staging and temporary folders okay let us go to the input folder this is our input file which is in avro format if i try to open this file we can't open this file okay so i just downloaded it to my local environment the file which we have downloaded if i try to open this file we can't open avro file so we need to have a correct tool to open this file okay if i try to open it with our text editor it look like this okay so you will not get a uh, useful information from this file that's why i have an equivalent json file which would help you to understand this that how it look like okay this is the same file which we have in our json format so this is basically in a nested format if you see we have different fields and we do have a nested fields inside this file we do have a details okay and we do have this nested fields up to two levels i guess okay so coming back to our architecture because i wanted to show you how to write data into relational databases okay so here i've taken cloud sql as an example right because uh, in my previous videos i haven't shown you how to write data from apache beam pipeline to a relational database table right so i wanted to cover that use case as part of this demo okay now you understand the input data now if you go back to our folder structure in our google cloud storage bucket so we have this output data right now this is an em empty folder now once you execute your pipeline you are going to see some output data over here okay so now coming to our cloud sql table this is one of our target database where we are going to write our data so this is the environment okay so i will try to connect this environment and using our cloud shell environment okay So now we have connected to our cloud SQL environment. So we'll see show databases. So we we have these databases. So I've created one database for our demo purpose. That is GCP demos. Okay, we'll use that database. Okay, now show tables. Okay, we have one table that is basic de details. So through our Apache Beam pipeline. we are going to create one more table resultant table so so we'll see that table once we execute that pipeline successfully okay so now we'll go to our code so here actually i have two copies of code okay one is for unit testing okay and uh, this is using a direct runner okay so i want to show you step by step how we are going to perform series of transformation on top of our raw p collection okay and i wanted to show you the data how it look like at each and every step okay so this is our pipeline right and uh, in the first place we have all the libraries imported which are required by this pipeline okay okay we do have our perdu class or perdu functionality we'll explain this in a while okay now coming to our beam pipeline okay main section so here we are defining our pipeline so in the first step we are reading data okay into our raw p collection okay so we are reading data from our gcs file path location this is our avro file which is placed into our gcs bucket location if you see our input data right this is the same file i am reading over here okay over here okay so now we'll read this data and we'll see how it look like right see this is the raw data okay as it is over here in the json data okay so it has the nested fields okay in the second step we are going to filter this data based on some criteria if you see our raw data so here we are trying to filter based on the python version right so we have this column details and it is a nested column 
inside this column we do have a column called python and its version that's what you can see over here right we do have a details and then we do have a column called python and its version okay so we are going to apply filter based on this criteria i want the version 3.10 okay so that it will filter the respective data now if i run this pipeline okay now you would see only the python 3.10 versions only okay so that means it has filtered the data based on python version right in the next series of transformation we are going to extract only required field from this complete record we want only certain fields like we want only country code and also project and also python version right so we want only country code project and python version okay and also timestamp of that data so this data basically if you understand this data this data belongs to our pypy downloads so we do have a uh, python library repository where you will download all the required python libraries to install into your environment right so we have that data okay and basically it has the on the all the downloads data right it has certain details like python version and other details right and also project and all those okay so now here in this transformation i want the country code and also the project and also the timestamp when it got downloaded i wanted to aggregate this data based on this criteria country code project okay and also python version okay now we'll see that data how it look like okay so now you can see uh, we have only required fields within our data right you can see the country code and the project and python version and the timestamp now in the next step we are performing the aggregation we are just grouping by key and also we are taking the count okay now if you see this data look like this okay now this is an aggregated data right now i want to convert this data right now if you see this data in a tuple format i want to convert it into dictionary format it's up to you okay so you can keep it in a tuple format or else in the dictionary or else in the list or else you can convert this data into string right but in my case i want to convert it into a dictionary format so that's what you can see everywhere i am using map function right here actually filter function to filter the data if i have to apply transformation uh, on top of each element within that p collection i can use map inside that mapper function you will have to uh, explicitly mention your logic to transform this data right so i am using the lambda functionality to extract the required fields and the next one this is the aggregated transformation that is we are using combiner and per key count okay and then in the next section again you are converting this data into a dictionary format again we are using mapper function again you are mentioning that lambda functionality okay so if you see this data it will be converted into a dictionary format right now you are going to write this data into a specified things it can be a gcs file it can be a other relational database or it can be a bigquery or it can be a other google cloud storage or database service okay so, okay once you have this data now you are writing that data into google cloud storage bucket into a specific file path location if you see this this is file path this is in same path but the different folder right output data so it will be written into this particular folder okay we are using beam io write avro method to write this data into google cloud storage bucket and here along with the file path okay you will have to mention the schema of that avro so this is the standard way to uh, mention our pass the schema information to this method so here you can see the type is because each line is a record within that avro file so that's where you are mentioning type as a record and then you will have to give some name to that and then you will have to mention the fields within that record okay we have four fields actually country code which is a string and project name and python version and aggregated data that is number of downloads 
for this criteria okay so when you execute this code then it will write the data into our gcs location okay so before i execute this let us examine the other branch of this pipeline okay so this is the second branch right so here the similar thing we are doing so if you see how this data look like here actually we are performing filter based on two different criteria one is operating system and and the next one is this version okay RUSTC version so we have these two columns available if you see under details okay we do have a column call system under the system we do have a column call name windows and under details we do have a column call RUSTC version so you can see that over here based on these two criteria we are filtering this data okay now you can see that data is filtered accordingly right in the next step we are again extracting the required fields here we are trying to extract name from detail system and also the version and also timestamp okay now you can see that output okay over here right in the next step aggregation same thing okay aggregated data so again converting this back to the dictionary right so now here actually then we are writing this data into a resultant p collection this is that p collection okay so once you have that data available in this p collection you are passing that data into a per day functionality over here now we'll examine this per day functionality okay so this is the per day functionality here actually we are using two different external python libraries one is cloud sql python connector and, and uh, another one is sql alchemy these two are required to write data into your cloud sql table right so here we are defining the database connection by passing the necessary input argument like uh, your sql connector string right and also the user id and the password right and uh, anyway for for the demo purpose i have hard coded my details but this is not the recommended way to hard code your values you can store these values somewhere in your secure location like secret manager i have already uploaded a video on this concept you can watch that video it is already available in our channel right so now once i have the database connection object is created then you will have to create the connection pool using your sql alchemy module right that is what we are doing over here you will have, you will have to prepare the insert statement which would insert the data which would be used to insert the data into your cloud sql table right so now we are opening up that pool connection then first of all we'll see if that target table exists in the database or not if it doesn't exist we are creating that table this is the table name if you see our cloud sql database show table now right now we don't have the table right when you successfully execute this pipeline you are going to see this data you are going to see this table available in that database right so it has the same schema of this output p collection okay so that is it has the os name and the version and number of downloads okay so then we'll insert the data and then we'll commit that okay so i hope you understood okay now we are going to execute this pipeline right over here using direct runner and we will see the output data and then we will run this pipeline onto data flow environment right so for that now i will have to uncomment this parallel it has to insert the data into google cloud storage bucket and also this table okay so yeah comment this print okay now you understand the pipeline flow okay now it's time to execute this pipeline and direct runner first okay so let us execute this pipeline now this pipeline is running on direct runner okay 
I mean, now successfully executed, right? Now we'll try to examine our outputs. Okay, the first output is this path, right? In the DCS file, in the DCS bucket, this is a folder. Now, if you refresh this folder, you can see this data. Okay, this is in agro format, right? So that means this pipeline has successfully created this agro file into this GCS location. Okay, in the second branch, it is writing the data into Cloud SQL table. Okay, so if you go back to your Cloud SQL environment right so now we have only one table within this database if you see the connection details in the core in Purdue right so this is the SQL environment cloud SQL environment and uh, this is the database we are using right so this is our environment SQL demo and uh, gcp we are into gcp demos right now we have one table that is basic details we are writing data into this particular table inside this Purdue. okay now we'll see if we have this table created or not through this pipeline now if you do show tables now you can see this table has been successfully created now if you do select start from this table now we have the required data right so now what we will do now we are going to run our pipeline using data for runner so before we run that pipeline let us delete or drop this table and also this file output file so that this file will be created through our data flow pipeline and also this table will be created again through our data flow pipeline let us drop this table okay uh, if you do show tables okay now we have only one table it will be created again through our data flow pipeline and coming to our GCS location just delete this data we'll go back to our core now I have one more Python notebook okay so from here I would like to Land this pipeline into our data flow environment so before we land this pipeline into our data flow environment we need to do a uh, few modifications right first of all we need to set up the options okay since we are using external python libraries as part of this beam pipeline we need to install those libraries into data flow workers okay so for that you need to set up those options right so for the dependencies or dependent libraries we have a setup file so apache beam is recommending different methods to do it so we are using this setup file option okay this file would look like this okay so again coming back to our this jupyter notebook environment we have this file locally uh, created okay so this is the file if you open this file you can see this file okay so this is using this particular module called setup tools okay and then we are giving some optional name and version so we are installing these two libraries okay one is cloud sql python connector and the other one is sql alchemy okay so that is what we are doing over here so we are just specifying that in the location of that file okay and also we need to mention the runner in mr case we were using direct runner now we are launching this pipeline into data flow runner you will have to mention the runner as well right and also you need to mention the project name and also temporary location that is this particular location okay so inside this location data flow is going to write it internal files so this is mandatory option you have to provide this details over here inside your beam option section okay now you will have to mention your region that is from where your data flow worker will be spinned up and uh, worker will be used to execute your pipeline okay so now you are clear with your setup options the remaining pipeline looks almost same okay 
so but only difference is here i have introduced one more function called run okay inside this run function we have defined our entire b pipeline it has two branches which will be executed in parallel okay now i am calling that run function in our main okay in our main method i would say okay so the logic is same now we are going to launch this pipeline into our data flow environment so if i run this pipeline over here within this notebook it will basically launch a batch pipeline on our data flow environment okay so go to our job section so now we are going to launch this pipeline just run now you can see all the logging information because we are using log module over here okay now it is just triggering our pipeline now you can see this is referring our gcs location temp location okay for its internal purpose now you can see this messages job state is pending and now job state is running okay now if you go to our data flow environment just refresh now you can see one batch pipeline is running okay just click on this now here you can see these two branches are parallelly running okay one will write output data into your gcs file path in agro format one will write data into your cloud sql table okay on the right side of the section you can see the execution environment details like so what is the region from where it is spinning up the workers asia south to and the hardware configuration of that particular worker okay we'll have to wait sometime the current worker is one based on your workload it can even scale these workers this is the hardware configuration of your workers it is using 3.75 gb rm and uh, the cpu configuration is this okay and you can see the other details like google data flow notebook from where we have launched this pipeline and uh, other information like your apache beam version okay and the job id okay so this is running we'll have to wait some more time okay so until that time i want to explain you few important things right when i debug this pipeline right when i when i was doing unit testing right this pipeline so i have encountered few issues okay i want to explain those issues right so if you go back to your previous jobs which have been failed you go to this particular job right and uh, let's examine the logs what is the reason for failure okay so here these are the errors okay now click on the logs this will display the logs okay now these are the this is the issue right so if you go to the worker logs especially then you will come to know the exact issue right just expand one of the error if you see this clearly says this name connector is not defined right so if you go back to our code right over here inside pardo we are using this connector object okay so we have already installed the required external libraries okay that's where we have defined those libraries within this setup file so just try to read this right in the apache beam official documentation so pickling and managing the main session if you don't specify your main session as a true when the python sdk submit the pipeline for execution 
to a remote runner okay that means data flow runner is a remote runner in our case right so the pipeline content such as transform user code is serialized or pickled into a byte code this is very important concept to understand okay using libraries that perform the serialization okay uh, the default pickler library used by b is dil okay d i l l okay so this will use a specific library okay so your code will be your transform code will be converted into byte code and if you don't use main session okay so whatever you do by default global imports functions you define globally right within that pipeline like you install our cloud sql connector and sql alchemy so the remaining libraries are already inbuilt within the apache beam okay but these are not included these are external okay so this will be automatically converted into byte code but since these are external libraries if you don't enable the main session as true this will not be considered for your byte code that's why you are getting this error okay so that's why they are recommending one thing if you disable your say main session true you will have to follow this approach you will have to import your modules locally that means instead of importing them globally you can import them locally within that required functionality in our case instead of importing these modules over here i will have to import them those modules over here within that our perdu functions or perdu class so that it will not throw this error okay so actually i i ran it multiple times okay it, it first of all uh, in in first case right it it has thrown error for uh, sql alchemy and then later for connector right that's why i have imported these two modules inside our local function that is perdu okay and then it ran successfully i hope this will definitely help you because uh, someone who is quite new to this apache beam pipeline and debugging and unit testing right for them it really help them and it will save lot of time okay so now go back to our current batch pipeline okay now you can see this is successfully completed if you go back to your graphical representation of your pipeline so there are two branches successfully executed okay now it's time to examine our output data so first we'll go to our gcs location okay so right the same location output data if you refresh now you can see the output data okay go back to our sql environment so if you do show table now it should again create this table okay so let's start from this table okay now you can see the data okay i hope uh, this will help you you understood the complete flow and the design of the apache beam pipeline okay and also how we launch our apache beam pipeline uh into data flow runner environment using these integrated notebooks okay that's it for this video we'll meet in the next video